Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hey there. What's the temperature up there, Brent? Uh, a couple thousand degrees. Right. <laughs> you hitting 100 up there? Yeah, you know, we hit 100 here. Actually, several days. You have AC, Brent? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. And a fan. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's the reason why he's smiling. Can you imagine to be like, we've, we've all gotten to be uh, weak sisters here. We can't stand a lot of hot weather with that air conditioning. Man, I, I don't have AC. I don't, you'll see my hair waving in the wind. <laughs> my <fans. laughs> that looks good, Daphne. It's my fan. <laughs> got the model look. <laughs> right, it's blowing. <laughs> um, I've been having interconnectivity issues this, this afternoon in various Zoom meetings I've had. So I may just turn off my camera. Sometimes that helps at least preserve my connection. That works. But I think there's just an overload on the system, maybe. Possibly. Are we missing anyone here? Let me see. Yeah, I'm looking for Keegan. Keegan's, Keegan just texted me. He is not available. Okay. Then okay. everyone else is here. All right, I'm gonna start the meeting at what time is it? 5.01. I'd like to call to order the Public Safety Commission regular meeting of September 7th, 2022. This meeting is being held by teleconference due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we appreciate everyone's patience as we navigate this Zoom meeting process. Commissioners and city staff are participating from remote locations and all votes will be taken by roll call. Members of the public can participate in the meeting or watch it by going to malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting. At this screen, you can click on the tab to sign up to speak on a particular item or items or the tab to watch the meeting. You will only be able to speak during the meeting if you sign up to speak before an item is called and are present in the Zoom meeting. So please make sure you visit malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting early to sign up to speak and download the Zoom application. Commissioners, if you have comments to make during this meeting, please raise your hand and I will call on you in turn so we can make our discussion clear for the record and the public. Uh, roll call, please. Sure. Commissioner Neat. Here. Commissioner Spiegel. Here. Vice Chair Stewart. Here. Chair Frost. Here. You have a quorum and ex officio member Woodward. Present. Is also here. All right. Um, Luis, you want to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Uh, Good. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, do I hear um, an approval of the agenda? Can I get a someone to approve the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? I'll make a second. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Anit. Sorry, uh, I approve. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Chair Frost? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Mary, can we get a report on the posting? The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on September 1st, 2022. Good enough. No ceremonial presentations. What about written and oral communications from the public? Do we have any? We have one speaker signed up, Matt Winter. Okay. Um, he is, I think he's here. Go he's ahead. Here. I see him in the meeting, but he hasn't connected to an audio device. So oh. I can unmute him. Yeah. Matt, can you, can you hear us?
we he's got to be connected to other device. We can't unmute him otherwise. Um, Matt, if you can hear us. Uh, um, if he, if uh, Mr. Winter, if you can't connect to audio to your through your computer, um, you can call. You should be good now. Oh, Mr. Winter. Mr. I, Winter, un unmute. On he's unmuted. He's unmuted, I believe. But he can't hear us? Okay. Or? okay, Mr. Winter, if you'd like, you can um, call in by phone by calling 669-449. Oh, no, excuse me. 669-449-171. That's not enough numbers. <laughs> <laughs> One tap mobile, one six six nine four four nine one seven one. And then enter meeting code eight nine four eight zero six seven seven six nine eight pound. And if you're able to connect that way, we can reopen public comment. Oh my God, I wish there was some way would know if he heard all that. Uh, th that's as much as we can do. All right, um, staff updates. Uh, Want to start with Rob? Sure. Uh, 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 real quick. Um, good to see Gabe. Um, so it, yeah, I can see that. I, I good to see. I good to see everybody here too. Um, real quick, I just want to mention a couple of things that are coming up that I want public safety to be aware of. We have uh, the Malibu triathlon coming up, not this weekend, but the following weekend. Um, there's some street closures that are going to be going involved with that. Um, hopefully, uh, based on the races and every, the times that are going on, we're, we're hoping that those road closures and uh, will be done by early afternoon. So um, not much uh, this this holiday weekend. We had uh, some stuff and our crews are going on around around uh, the city picking up stuff we had some broken um uh trash cans that were that were damaged from accidents and stuff and and we are we are cleaning up an accident that happened on Malibu Canyon Road there was some damage to a street sign and stuff and we're doing that um lastly that I, I want to mention that um I am working on trying to set up a joint public works and public meeting with uh, you guys um and uh, the topic will be Caltrans projects. Um, I've been in detailed conversation with Caltrans and have them, uh, uh, I, I have the project managers that are responsible for the design and implementation of these projects. Um, they are ready to kind of give presentations in detail to um, both commissions. And so we're, we're looking to have that towards the end of the month and uh, we'll be contacting you shortly. And that's all I had. Thank you, Rob. Uh, public safety, Luis? Sure. Sarah, where's Sarah? Sarah's on here as well. Let's start uh, with you. you. We'll, we'll go to, well, you wanna start first, Sarah? Girls first. Sure. Um, So first and foremost, uh, Luis and I have moved down to a new location. Um, I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, but uh, please come down and visit us in the new uh, West Wing first floor. We're across from Public Works now. Um, to tail right on uh, Rob's coattails, we do have the Ride to the Flags. It's not our event, but the Ride to the Flags is occurring this Saturday, September 10th. Um, I believe they're leaving Ventura. Sorry, trying to find my notes. Um, I believe they leave Ventura around uh, seven and should be in Malibu at Bluffs Park between 10, 30 and 11. And that is a, for those who are unfamiliar, it is an annual event uh, where groups of motorcycle enthusiasts um, in the tune of hundreds to thousands meet at Point Magoo and then ride down to Pepperdine to um, honor those who were lost on September 11th. Um, 
We have our CERT team meeting this Saturday as an ongoing event. We have uh, in the swing of our National Preparedness Month, many things going on and many events happening. Please check our website. That's malibucity.org slash prep, P-R-E-P month. Um, on Thursday, we'll be sending our first Everbridge test message, and that is going to be targeted by evacuation zones. So it'll go to zone 11, which is our uh, easternmost zone next to Topanga. And then we'll be working our way west from zone 11 to 12, 13, 14, et cetera. Uh, and that should be sent out around 5 p.m. Um, if people do not receive it, it may be because they're not in that zone or they haven't registered or need to update their registration. Uh, they can send me an email at publicsafety at malibucity.org and I'll try and walk them through it. Or they can search for their zone on malibucity.org slash zone search. And that zone search feature is by address so they can type their address in and figure out where they are in the zones. And that's it for me. Wish? Sure, Th thank you, Sarah. Um, quick uh, impound yard update, uh, had a busy weekend. Uh, we actually towed the most amount of cars since we began operations on June 18th. We towed uh, 63. Um, so we opened Saturday, Sunday, and then of course on the Labor Day on Monday. So they were uh, pretty busy. Uh, again, also very thankful. The Sheriff's Department is very thankful to be working with us on that. Um, it's of course improved their operations. Um, as far as keeping, you know, um, fire hydrants and other hazardous areas uh, clear from vehicles. So operations will continue to that. Just a reminder, we'll have the impound yard uh, operating through October 3rd. So just about a month left, um, but that raises our total of cars towed to 293 uh, since we began towing uh, on June 18th. So pretty, pretty busy weekend as far as the impound yard goes. We'll continue to monitor operations, but so far so smooth. No issues to report on that. Uh, upcoming events on September 22nd, we have the Homelessness Connect Day uh, that is being organized in conjunction with uh, Lake County Supervisor uh, Sheila Kiel's office, our outreach team, um, and some community organizations like Malibu Cart, and, uh, the Methodist Church, and so forth. So a uh, great event with a lot of great resources for our homeless community here in Malibu. Um, we're hearing that we should have the homeless count numbers incredibly soon. Uh, as soon as we get that, of course, we'll, we'll be able to uh, share that information with everybody. So uh, once those numbers are published, we'll, we'll go ahead and circulate that. So we have that coming up. Um, and then in the upcoming city council meeting uh, next Monday, we'll be talking about the Knox box item uh, that you all, of course, voted to uh, pursue uh, through a community education campaign. So we'll be uh, presenting that to city council on the meeting um, on September 12th. So hope to have a uh, somewhat of an update for the next uh, public safety commission meeting on what uh, council thought and kind of how we'll be moving forward with the Knox box item, uh, hopefully to be able to install some of these emergency key system, uh, systems in most of these uh, gated communities throughout the city. But uh, of course you all know fire season's approaching as well. And we've been working proactively with the Sheriff's Department, our outreach team, the outreach coordinator uh, with the Council of Governments, as well as uh, the host team to keep the, the hillsides and the canyon areas of the city uh, clear of encampments. Um, we're trying to, you know, again, be very proactive with this and try to keep our, uh, the amount of homeless fires uh, sorry about that, uh, to a minimum. Uh, we're doing pretty good so far compared to last year. We're at a, a three so far in 2022. And we, uh, you know, which is a, a huge improvement from last year. So again, we're being very proactive and working with our law enforcement and our outreach team to be very service oriented um, and keep, of course, uh, these areas free of encampment. So uh, we're doing good progress on that. And uh, that's it on my end. I'll go ahead and pass it on to uh, Gabe, Greg, and Brad for a fire update. Hey, Louis, let me, let me interrupt yes, you for one minute. I got sure. an updated count on the weekend. It's 75 cars. <laughs> For the weekend. 75 cars. 33 on Saturday, 19 on Sunday, and 23 on Monday. Sounds good. Let me okay. note that up. Well, there you go. <laughs> A few more cars. So, yes, incredibly busy weekend. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, all right. Gabe? 
and then Brad or Brad, then Gabe, however you want to. I think Brad's going to speak. Brad's going to speak for us tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, we got, we've so far this year, these heases we're working on, we've done 30 uh, since uh, January, March, April 4th. And to date, we've done 30. And I'm trying to get a lot more folks. We've been putting them up. Um, and people aren't biting a whole bunch, but uh, I think it's that time of the year. It's hot, but uh, I think they're going to start picking it up because uh, next month for uh, this month, National Preparedness Month, We've got, uh, I've got two classes going on, one on the September 21st and another on the 28th. Uh, it's called Home Hardening uh, with Curb Appeal. So hopefully that's going to draw on some folks and um, get the word out to, to folks out there that the service uh, is, is really valuable and we need to be doing. It. Uh, the light fuel moisture, as we know, is, is, is at critical levels. It's gone down. Uh, about 8% from 63% to 69%. And uh, we do have, well, as of today, when I looked at the analysis, the fire danger analysis, the light fuel moisture actually is up a little bit, 63, but the burn index is 114, uh, which is still be below the 192 threshold. Uh, and pretty much, and I, and, uh, I know Greg has an earthquake class that he's going to be teaching. Oh, one, one more item too. There was a small start uh, Friday night late uh, up in Corral Canyon. It was a five by five spot uh, just a uh, half mile up from the Malibu seafood uh, fish market. Uh, basically it was a um, abandoned building. There was a Dura log in there. I guess the guy wasn't really homeless, but um, he was just looking for a place. He was homeless that night. Uh, un unaware or unsure if he was arrested. That's why, Luis, I haven't contacted you about it. They, they walked him down and apparently he just left. He, he didn't look like he's homeless. He had a, like a suit on and everything. He was just trying to keep warm, but uh, it didn't go anywhere. There was no winds. So uh, that wasn't that big of a deal. Other than that, um, Gabe, Greg, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, just real quick, um, on my earthquake preparedness class that I'll be hosting on the uh, 19th, uh, beginning of the 19th in September, um, that's in preparation too for October 20th of this year is the great shakeout. So I'd like to see, you know, hopefully we'll get participants and we'll get people prepared and then they can exercise their preparations on October 20th. So I just wanted to get that early word out and maybe get some enrollments and signups for the two classes that I'll be conducting. That's all. Greg, I'm sorry I didn't see you down there when I pointed out uh, Gabe and Brad. And by the way, Brad, the guy with the Duralog told the police that he was performing a religious ceremony. He was praying to the fire. Really? I didn't hear that part and of it. <laughs> that's what he told them. Wow. So just to follow up on that, okay. Gabe. Uh, I don't have anything to add. Thank you. I'm going to tag on to uh, Brad and Greg and say that those classes that are being offered at this time are actually offered. One will be in person at City Hall. One will be virtual. If you'd like to sign up for the virtual, you can visit malibusafety.eventbrite.com and sign up for the class that you're interested in. And all of this information is listed on the malibucity.org slash prep month page. Awesome. Um, I don't think we have any other staff updates. We don't have any other staff to update. Um, thank you all. Um, Mary, did Mr. Winter get online? I think it's possible he's the um, phone that's signed up. That would Mr. probably be him. Yeah, Mr. Winter, if you're the 805 phone number that's on the meeting, can you unmute? How does he unmute on a phone? We, we Star invite nine. him. Mr. Winter? Mr. Winter, can you hit star nine on your cell phone or on your phone? And, okay, he's raising his hand. Parker, 
he just hit star nine on his phone and it'll I unmute. Mean, you should also say, it yeah, tells you too on the phone. I'm not sure what kind of device he's using. There's a few different ways, but usually it's like either star six or star nine. Okay, try star six. Oh. Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. You are. Mr. Winter. Yes, I can hear you. Um, you're on, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, just a real quick, I'm Matt Winter. I work out of Sierra Towing. My wife is uh, the owner. I'm a retired law enforcement, and I just want to thank the, uh, the city council for the opportunity to use that lot down there this year for the towaways. Um, last year, we were using kind of a dirt area that was north of Trancus, uh, and it was kind of hard to contain the vehicles. I just want to kind of just real briefly just go through a couple of things that just seemed to be kind of a misconception with what we were doing down there and people's idea of, you know, the city council with the emergency action that they had to do to use that lot. And they kind of tie the towing of the vehicles and the emergency action, that lot together, but I don't think they really understand the purpose. With us being down there, you know, we work with the, the, Los Angeles County Sheriff's and we do the towaways down at the beach for the areas of like Point Doom, Paradise Cove. We're going all the way down to Surf Rider this year up to Mondo's and Zuma. And the, the concern there with the vehicles that we're towing away is the public safety that those vehicles create. You know, the ones that are uh, Paradise Cove, Surf Rider, uh, Zuma, El Matador, you know, they might be blocking emergency access for emergency vehicles when there is an incident that they need to get to. On Point Doom, you have people's driveways and stuff being blocked. You have people parking on sidewalks, which create, you know, a hazard causing pedestrians have to walk in the road. And the use of that yard there with our tow companies being operating out of like Thousand Oaks area, we just don't have the capability to take these cars that far that quickly and have trucks available for more, you know, emergency, like when they have a, a need for a tow. So having a yard that's closer that we can use just on that temporary week, week, weekend basis was a great benefit. Having it fenced in was another great thing because we've had instances and we even had one this year with the other tow company where people come and they jump in their car and they try to take off. So um, I just seems to me that the, the, the public and some of the information that they're getting, getting that they're kind of given the grief about with this emergency order to use that, you know, you comes down to the, the, the summer season and the need for these towways for the, you know, public safety. And there was just nowhere to put the vehicle. So again, I, you know, really appreciate the city council stepping up and going through with that and uh, look forward with trying to figure out the next area where we're going to be able to, you know, store these cars, but uh, this again, thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. We, we appreciate everything you guys have done, you and Cammie and, and the other tow company as well. All right, do we have any other communication from the public? No, that was the only speaker. And also if Mr. Winter is still here, I just wanted to make sure he knew that um, there is only one discussion item, major discussion item on the agenda tonight. So we'll be getting to it in a moment. And it is to discuss the location, you know, a plan for next summer and a permanent location if he wanted to stick around to hear that conversation. I have contact info for him, so I'll make okay. sure he gets that. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Mary, for reminding us. Let's go to commissioner's reports. Let's start with Brent. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. I've, I've got uh, three things briefly to give you an update on. Um, one of them, uh, one of the things that uh, we've been working on is working with some of the insurance industry folks on more up-to-date tools that exist for wildland urban interface fire risk analysis uh, using satellite data. So um, I should have some more information for you probably next month, but it's a a tool that does a satellite path every four months uh, in extreme detail, looking at communities or specific addresses 
Um, it looks and understands what the vegetation risk is, clearances and so forth from a satellite standpoint. It's being used by the insurance industry for a little while now and um, hopefully it's something that we might be able to use um, locally as well. So I'll, I'll update you on that. On the uh, community brigades, uh, we continue to make some progress. I, I know that Megan, the courier, is on, on the line here as well with LA County Fire and Megan, along with uh, Chief Ewald and Chief Smith, who you all know, um, were very gracious. We had a meeting about a week ago uh, where we brought a lot of the parties together to continue the discussion on the, the uh, pending uh, brigade pilots. It was a very positive discussion, and we hope to follow that with a, a meeting coming up in the near future with both CAL FIRE and Elk County uh Fire Department senior leadership. So we're moving ahead, which is a really good thing. Um, finally, the last thing I want to mention, I saw an article about the funding. This relates to Rob, something you talked about, but funding now released back through Cal Fire for, um, not Cal Fire, I'm sorry, funding for Caltrans on like Las Flores, where the intersection is there. And um, clearly very interested, and we had talked about this before, in participating in any discussions on that from the Malibu perspective, because uh, I think we have a really good understanding of what those challenges are and just want to make sure that they're clearly heard by Caltrans before they start digging their shovels into the ground and doing a few other things. So uh, that's all I got, Chris, thank you. Oops, you're muted, Chris. Some people like it that way. Uh, Daphne? I don't have a lot anything really to report, but I just wanted to comment that the work done in connection with National Prepared this month, I think, um, is really great and very much appreciate the diversity of the programming that you've put together. Um, the annual community fire season briefing on September 13th, doing that in a virtual way so that as many people as possible can join. I think they're going to be well attended. And you know, thank you, Greg, for the information on the earthquake preparedness program on the 19th, uh, then followed by the, the hardening <laughs> the curbs. It seems like that's a really busy week. And hopefully, you know, the city on your social media, you can work on getting that out to people because I think every one of those programs are programs that people always ask, issues that people always ask about. And a lot of times, I think they don't, don't know about the events. And um, so the most you can do to get all your hard work in front of as many people as possible, you know, I think would be great. And, and I'll be sure to post, and maybe all the commissioners, um, we, can, we can post as well so that we can try to reach as many people as possible. So thank you for all your hard work on That's all I have, Chris. Josh, thank you, Daphne. Josh? Thank you, Chris. Um, also, thank you, Brent. It sounds like you, you're making a lot of progress. I mean, especially on the, the brigade stuff. That's, that's really, really cool. And I, I really appreciate you and Keegan stepping up and handling that. Um, I did want to talk about a, a couple things. Um, the earthquake preparedness stuff, that's um, something important. That's something that I've been thinking about quite a bit, especially um, hearing about the water main repairs um, coming into LA. Um, we're supposed to shut off um, all of our outdoor watering for the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, I, I do think that most of Malibu citizens are woefully un, unprepared if we do run out of water. I mean, it takes, um, there's different theories, but, uh, it takes about three gallons per day per person to basically survive. That's drinking hygiene and cooking. Um, so everybody should, should have a good supply, um, ideally at least seven days, but I don't, I don't want to overstep on my knowledge and conflict with the cities, but, um, I'm interested in the, in the classes. So hopefully I'll be able to attend. Um, over the last weekend, you know, I went to the chili cook-off um, and I noticed that, you know, last year or might've been the year before we used the, the chili cook-off used the lot next door for uh, parking. Um, this year we didn't, 
so uh, people were just kind of parking wherever the city, the city hall lot filled up pretty quickly. And then it was just, Hey, you're on your own. So everybody was kind of parking across PCH up and down uh, civic center um, in cross Creek. And it was just, you had a lot of kids darting in and out of traffic. It was very dark, um, especially with all the lights at the chili cook off. So it just made it that much more. Um, it, se it seemed more dark than it, than it was, but, and it was kind of an unsafe situation. So maybe next year, um, I don't know if the answer is more lights down there, um, better traffic control, or uh, maybe we can figure out a way to open up that lot just so we don't have people darting in and out of traffic. It was kind of sketchy down there. Um, so that was that. We had spoken... Um, one agenda item was the situation on Westward last, uh, I think it was last year we discussed, you know, things that we could do the valet at the sunset, the, uh, the parking kiosk at Westward. But when I was on my arson watch patrol, I saw that the, uh, that, that it Westward filled up or, uh, PDS filled up, Zuma filled up. So I went down there just to check out the situation. Um, there was no signage PCH and Westward. And as soon as you got to, um, I think it's the Zuma Bay, Zuma Bay, as soon as you got to that condo entrance right off of Westward, it was stop traffic. There's no way for um, any emergency vehicles to get in, get out. And so I really do think that at some point we need to agendize um, taking a second look what's going on at Westward because it's, it's a tough situation down there and we, it needs to be fixed. Um, so maybe, I don't know, I don't know how that works. If staff can speak to the city manager about agendizing that, um, hopefully we can have something, a good solution for next summer. Um, I don't think that we're gonna have anything in the next few weeks, certainly, but next summer would be a good goal for us to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Uh, for now, that's all I have. Thank you. Josh, thank you. Doug Stewart? Yes, sir, Mr. Frost. Um, several things, I think, um... I'd like to save uh, a story about the fatals we had this last week with the Dustin Carr, but uh, an after action report on Labor Day. And we have a, a situation between the chili cook off, the closed beaches, a fatal accident on Canaan, probably on the Malibu Canyon and PCH. And as uh, I think we were all worried about what the worst case situation would be, what if we had a fire or an evacuation? Roads are closed. There's a, our uh, overflow lot at Zuma is full. And I think we need to take a hard look at what we can do to either, uh, as Josh pointed out, and Westwood Beach was tied up too, what we can do to try and either stem the flow of cars stuck in the city or have a better evacuation plan. Uh, you know, this, is, this was the worst case situation we could have had. Plus it was a weekend and I'm not sure who was on duty if we had to operate the EOC. So I do think it would be appropriate to put on the agenda what Josh just mentioned and an after action review to see what we could do better or were we prepared for this worst case situation we get. So I don't know, Mary, if that's something you put on or we need to have a motion on it, but I do think we need to have a review. Well, you don't need a motion, um, but we have our annual review next week. I mean, next month, our annual review of all the public safety services. So we'll have uh, fire, lifeguard, sheriff, um, VOPs. We are looking into possibly having someone from beaches and harbors attend as well. So that might be a good time because obviously you'll also have public safety staff to talk about something like that. It won't be specific to Labor Day weekend, but we'll have both the, um, and the beach team summary report will be given at that same meeting. So okay. that might be the perfect opportunity for you to bring that up. All right, well, I'm giving a heads up then to uh, Lieutenant Carr and Megan that um, that's gonna be a topic that I wanna see covered just because I think we we dodged a potential bullet, it was maybe not likely to happen, but we did have the worst case scenario set up if it did. So I would like to have a review on that. Um, next thing is more to Sarah, a couple of things, the status of the evacuation zones, we keep saying it's postponed until the county gets their job done. Where are we at on those? Can, when are we going to be able to finalize those zones? 
so the zones are finalized and I'm sure Megan and Chief Smith will be talking about them next month. Um, it's not a fast process. The zones, as far as I know, have been finalized. I've actually uploaded them into Everbridge, which is our reverse 911 style disaster notification system. And we'll be using them for our tests every Thursday uh, for the rest of the month, testing each zone one at a time. Um, until the media campaign for those zones is launched, I'm not going to be able to give you a timeline on signage or zones or anything like that. Okay. I know that it is in the process, but I, I unfortunately can't give you a timeline. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we have a real educational issue trying to uh, tell people what zone they're in. Is there anything we can do to either... So the zones aren't really going to change. Um, there's going to be a, a very minimal change, a nomenclature, um, but the city worked with county and with county fire to ensure that the zones will stay the same shape and will still have zone 11, zone 12, zone 13, zone 14. It'll be a, a, a minimal change to that. Well, you know, I'm a big supporter of putting signs on PCH that say you're entering and leaving those zones. So um, I'm going to keep pushing for that. Um, status of the uh, license plate cameras, where are we at on those? Uh, they, they were ordered uh, back in, I believe it was, it was July, uh, but they're having some issues with just kind of procuring them and shipping them out. So they haven't been shipped out yet. Last we heard from the company. Um, they still haven't been shipped out. That's all. They're, they're looking at maybe sometime this month. Okay. All right. Um, Rob, my favorite thing, bot stats. How we, who's putting bot stats out or making sure? we got fire season coming up. And as I drive around, I don't see a bot stat in front of all the fire hydrants. Well, we've been around and, and, and did them all, a bunch of them. We provided that. That's, that should be the... Um, we can go back and look at it again, but it, it's really a combination of the different agencies that put that out there. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check with our staff, but I, I believe we went out the previous couple of years to do a big push to get that done. Yeah, but they, they do you have a specific do you have a specific street? Are are you seeing? You're not seeing any? Well, I think we just need to drive around and see them. Uh, and if it's been a couple of years, you know, bot stats come off all the time. Well, we're out there a lot doing a bunch of stuff out there and seeing if there's something then if there's a bot dot that's that's been re removed out there when we're doing street maintenance, we replace it. But, but if you see something that you um, that that's missing it, I mean, let me know. OK, Mr. Uh, we'll make sure Mr. or Mrs. Bot Stott, uh gets on that. OK. All right. Um, and then lastly, the VOP car, where are we at on that? Is it done? Uh, Luis, is that you? It's got the uh, VOP car. It was in, in for signage, I think. The badging? I, we're still I can kind of get that when I yeah. talk. Go ahead. OK, I'll let you have it, Chris. Okay. Um, by the way, I want to emphasize on Daphne's comment. I think she's absolutely right. This has been a great preparation for the emergency uh, month. Hats off to the department. Uh, you guys have done a very good job on this. And, you know, I think we're, as we've done all we can do to get these people uh, notified of what's going on in the city. It's proverbial, you can't make a horse drink at the trough, but uh, we, you guys have done everything you possibly can. So we're as good as we can be at this moment. Thank you. Chris, over to you. Um, I'll start with the VOP card. So the VOP card, the bailment agreement, believe it or not, has to go be agendized and has to go to the city council to be signed. The original bailment agreement the county council had already looked at and had made the rounds had our prior, um, I think, assistant city manager's signature on it, her name on it. So Kelsey's name has to go on it. So that had to be changed. Then it has to go back around and be signed by city manager, Kelsey and Trevor. So that's where it's at. Um, I don't ever remember it taking a year, but it'll be a year tomorrow. It'll be a year in October since we got that car. So I, I you know, things like that, it's kind of unacceptable that it took that long. And I don't know exactly 
you know, which cliff it fell off or how many cliffs it fell off, but it kept bouncing back to the city. And that's where we're at as of right now today. So that car still, once that happens, that car still got to go to fleet to get wrapped and get the rollers put on the roof and et cetera. So the car we wanted to have for spring break, Memorial Day, July 4th, Labor Day, we probably won't have until Christmas. So that's the story of the VOP car. That's Christmas of this year, right? I'm not even going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Um, for, I want to start with, um, you know, there's a fireworks ordinance at the county level and at the state level. It doesn't do much. It's, it's a misdemeanor. Um, I think that having a misdemeanor for fireworks in Canoga Park might be acceptable, but I don't think in the Santa Monica Mountains uh, that those ordinances that we have uh, works. So, you know, I think at some point, I think we need to discuss having a city ordinance with, on fireworks with a substantial fine schedule attached to it. And I'm basing this basically on what just happened recently. Chair Frost? Yeah. The city does have a fireworks ordinance. I'll send it to everybody um, if you think it needs to be modified and or, and or added to the fee schedule. Well, we can do that. Good, because I don't, I don't, I, I haven't seen that, but good. Thanks for bringing that up. Please get that to us and we'll look at it. Okay, cool. Um, number two, too many trucks on the highway and too many trucks on Canaan. Uh, oversized vehicles on Canaan, four axles. You name it, they're going and coming on Canaan. You can stand on Canaan at any hour of the day. You wait a half an hour and you'll see somebody come through. This is a problem. I had a, personally had a friend killed at that intersection because of a truck coming down there. So bottom line is, yeah, we have that arrestor bed, but what if the guy doesn't make it to the arrestor bed? What if he rolls it in Zumarez, where we just had a, what was close to a fatal uh, in a straight on car accident? So. I think that we really have to keep an eye on that. And these guys that are traversing the canyon going back and forth to Lost Hills should be kind of on the alert for those, uh, you know, people towing trailers, trucks, et cetera. Um, kind of a problem. RVs and parkers. Okay, the electronic ticket riders are in. Hold on for one second, please. Sorry about that. Uh, the electronic, electronic ticket riders, um, I believe, and Sarah might be able to answer this for me. Did Lost Hills pick them up? Unfortunately, I don't know. I didn't get a chance to meet with Renee about that today. I know that she was working with them to try and get that organized uh, in advance of Labor Day. I can't speak to whether or not they've been collected. All right. Well, as we all know, that those were specifically obtained to put in the earliest cars specifically the earliest car that was specifically bought and paid for to handle the parking problem between you know, midnight and 5 a.m. And we were told all the way along the way that each of these steps, that would do it. Well, this is the last step, there's nothing else to do. So once those get in their hands, I'm hoping we get the highway cleared. We had over, we had 300 plus cars and RVs over the weekend illegally parked at night on the highway. Um, we had 100 one night a week ago when I went out and checked at 10 o'clock at night and again at four in the morning. So we got to get that dialed in. We spent a lot of money and put a lot of effort towards it, rewritten ordinances, up fines, done everything we can. So now it's up to the sheriff's department to enforce it. Um, Westward safety issues. I was at Westward on Monday at five o'clock and that was the most dangerous thing I've ever seen. There was cars stuck in the middle of that. If somebody was dying in there, they, they wouldn't have been able to get anybody in there. There was nobody. Cars were illegally parked. We towed three cars out while I was standing there. There was a vendor illegally parked. There was cars stopped in the road that I never saw move. Um, I suppose when they shut down Westward, it shuts down Sunset Restaurant too, to an extent. So I don't know. I think that I think that I'm very disappointed in the people in this city that couldn't see what the problem was down there and wanted everything to remain as if it was 1960. Well, the problem is we can't do that. That has to be engineered and we have to start looking at solutions to that because that problem hasn't been solved yet. And we've got to look at it and get it done. And hopefully we'll have another meeting with Public Works where we together with them talk about some of these issues. Rob, I hope you're listening to that. Um, 
and we can try to get something done. Um, Sunday morning, um, I was out on the highway, believe it or not, Terry and I walked 21 miles early in the morning and we got to see a lot of stuff along the highway, including what I would call literally drag racing at the West End where cars are pulling up one in one lane, one in the other, slowing everybody down and then literally taking off. And uh, I saw Ferraris, we saw Lamborghinis, we saw guys with numbers on their cars, and I saw no sheriff's presence at, at all the whole time we were out there, which was eight hours, except at Zuma. Now, I don't doubt on Labor Day weekend that they're tied up other places. I know they're doing their job. It's just that, are we that undermanned that one whole section of Malibu has absolutely no law enforcement in it? It's not, I don't think it's law enforcement's fault per se. I think it's just the fact that we're undermanned, plain and simple. Um, the racing was, was bad. Um, one, another item, um, this speaks to Gabe and Brad and Greg. I was in Latigo yesterday looking at a piece of property off Newton Canyon. Now that area burned over in Woolsey. And I talked to Gabe about this yesterday. I have never walked on brush that felt like I was walking on Rice Krispies. It, it was that crisp. And, and, and honestly, I've never seen the color of the brush look like it did yesterday. I've never seen that before. And I've been out here almost my entire adult life. Granted, if you had a fire right now in that area, it's not going to move like Woolsey because it doesn't have the fuel load, but it's going to move fast because it's got a lot of light, flashy fuels and with wind behind it, it's going to be at your doorstep before you can say Woolsey. So there still is a danger, even in the areas that have already burned over. Um, you know, yeah, you have a burn imprint there that's going to slow it down, but that brush, I mean, I, I've never seen anything like that. That was frightening just being in there. Um, and I, I want to I want to speak once to what Mr. Winter spoke about. You know, every time there's a blocked driveway, a blocked street, a blocked access way, a blocked sidewalk, a blocked fire hydrant, it becomes a mini emergency until it's cleared. You don't know what's going to happen while that driveway is blocked. What if the guy has some kind of medical emergency? What if something on Westward happens? What if a kid gets hit by a car? All of those things are mini emergencies. And it wasn't the emergency itself that people were paying attention to when we opened up the yard. The emergency was every day what went on and what we needed to tow to avert an emergency. Actually, it was an emergency situation looking for a catalyst. So, you know, I, I think what they did was tremendous. I watched them work on Sunday, never seen people get cars in and out so fast and so professionally. And that was on Westward. I don't know how they did it with flatbeds. Pretty amazing. Um, and that's it for me. Aren't you guys lucky? I'm done. <laughs> All right. Consent calendar. Can I um, speak to approval of the minutes? Does somebody, would somebody like to uh, speak to that? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, consent calendar. I'll second. Mary, you need to take a vote. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. I, I just, um, I hit the button wrong. So that was uh, Vice Chair Stewart and Chris, you were the second? Yes. Okay. Um, Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Chair Frost? Yes. Commissioner Neat? Yes. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mary. On to new business, 5A. Day use impound site. Recommend action develop plans for selecting a temporary site for day use impound yard summer 2023 and identify potential locations for a permanent impound site. I don't, Mary, I don't see anybody um, hosting this item. So shall I just go ahead and host it? Yes, we, uh, and let me just introduce it. Um, so I, when we didn't have anything specific for this agenda, so I spoke with Chair Frost and since this is something that you requested be put on your assignments list for this year, it seemed like an important conversation to have as the, the summer was winding down. So we can just uh, start developing the plans for what, what you wanna do and how you wanna address it. You've got two separate tasks on your assignments list. One is to um, find an alternate location to the Heather Cliff site for next summer. And then the second is to identify a location for a permanent site 
Um, I thought it was important to note that I believe both from the public and others, including members of this commission who have stated that the, the Heathercliff site has been less of an issue than was previously anticipated that it had that it being down a little further, it's um, not as visible. That was one big concern. There were people concerned that it was going to be, um, there were gonna be tow trucks and vehicles going through, large vehicles going through neighborhoods and all the feedback that the city's received so far has been very positive in both of those areas. So from there, um, Chair Frost, please go ahead. I'm gonna blame that on Josh. <laughs> So, um, Josh and I spent a lot of time walking through Malibu and walking over different sites and talking to different people and taking a lot of what I would call a bad word from people in the community about this. And, and I will tell you that after we got this thing rolling and after, you know, a couple of months of it, some of those people actually came back and said, you know what? It's not anything like what we thought it was going to be. We were told it was going to be this, that, and the other. And of course, they were told that on next door. So here we are. It turned out to be a lot better than anyone expected. I never had any doubts that, that Mr. DeBow over there would not set it up properly. I knew he would. And I, I knew our vision was one to hide it from everybody. And I knew that we needed to do it. And Josh, I mean, we, we were in, in lockstep on that. But coming up this year, we're going to have to look at different options because that option is not one that we can use again at this point anyway, that I know of. So I think that we need to open it up to the floor here and I wanna hear what everybody has to say about it. And, uh, and then maybe pick two people that want to go forward with this and, uh, and start looking at it for next year. You know, we started, we started pretty early last year, Josh. Do you remember what the date was? Do you remember when we started? It, it was after summer. I, I think we we started. I mean, truly looking and in, and in, in like October, um, but you know things happen. You know, it's. Uh, I mean, we're kind of run in circles by the school, and then, uh, and then once we identified once we identified and voted on Heathercliff, we still had all this uh, lag time between city council and public noticing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think it's a good idea to start early and start fast and just basically, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of going beyond your original question, but uh, sure. basically start over. I'd like to just start over and uh, figure out a really good solution um, for both of these items. I think they're, they're separate items, right? One's a permanent and one's for uh, next summer. So um, I'll let everybody else speak and, and then maybe I'll say whatever I gotta say. And you know, can Josh- I, can, Excuse me, can I add one more thing? Yeah. Um, they, I did talk to the city manager and assistant city manager and they still have not um, decided on when they're going to start scheduling community meetings to talk about usage of the city's various properties that were purchased before the fire and the pandemic. Um, those were scheduled for, they were scheduled for 2020 and obviously had to be um, set aside during the pandemic, hoping that it wasn't going to be very long before we would be back in in-person meetings. At this point, I don't know if they may try to schedule at least one initial meeting virtually before because it's still unknown when we'll be in person anymore but that is still kind of hanging over things with regard to the use of heather cliff whether it's next year or in the future i don't i think because the way the emergency ordinance was written we can't use it next year i think that was part of the deal but we can i we don't can, i don't know and I'll, I'll look into that for you yeah let's look into that and you know um I think this point this year pointed out something that we do need we do need to have this in play and and also the fact that if we had more um, shall we say resources in back of the tow trucks the tow trucks were there they were fine the yard was fine the problem was was we didn't have enough people to write 180s 
to, to satisfy the amount of problem that we had. I mean, every day at five o'clock, there's 40 or 50 cars still left out there in front of hydrants at Le Matador and other places and their CSOs go home at five. So that's something that's gonna to need to be addressed too. They could have towed another, probably another, it could probably double the total if we had had the resources out there to do that. And, and also to point out that the, the, the number of cars that are ever in that yard at one time, you know, does not reflect the total amount of cars that is towed that day. And I keep, I keep hearing numbers like, well, we went by there at noon and there was two cars in there. Well, you know, the Saturday that somebody said that, that was incorrect. There was actually seven because I looked at the yard at 10 o'clock and they had seven in there ready to go in there before they even opened the yard. So we get a lot of false information out there. So I think that people need to go look for themselves, talk to the tow truck operator, get answers to their questions and not rely on other people who seem very biased towards not having this service available in Malibu. That being said, I also think that at some point we're going to have to pick two people off here to run with this. And I'd like to hear from everybody on here before we get to that point. So please open up, talk, speak. Um, Rob, any of you, Brad, Gabe, anybody that's got something that can add to this. I mean, fire hydrants are an issue. So, you know, we need to locate a place to do this again next year, probably permanently. So floor's open. Josh? Yeah, so I mean, what, what I'm what I'm seeing on this agenda is is two things: uh, is a, is a permanent place, um, a permanent tow yard in Malibu, which I personally I don't know how the rest of you feel about that. I think that we should have, and I think that um, I'm, I don't want to say where it should be, but I do think that we need to identify a place for it. Separately, I believe that we need to work on the te the um, the temporary tow yard for, for the summer months. Now, if they're in the same location, great. If not, we'll figure it out. But um, I, what, what Mary was speaking about, you know, it, I do really value community involvement and, and I don't want to take away from that. But at a certain point, we need to do what we're set up to do is to, um, move forward and make this community safer. And I don't want to wait another three years to, to do that. I, I hopefully it happens soon, but I'd like to really identify a few options for a permanent tow location. And then, uh, while we do so, we, we just hit the ground running and, uh, try and find a place for next summer. But I, I think in order to do that, we really need to hear from the sheriffs, and the tow companies to see what worked, what didn't, what went right, what went wrong, um, how and how we can improve things. So um, my my inclination is would be to set up a, an ad hoc um, two members, and we just we just hit it and and go for it. So that's that's my feedback. Let me add something to that. Um, I did a little research on the whole the whole West End thing. And it turns out about 90% of the vehicles do come from the West End. But I also found out an interesting little tidbit was that one of the reasons that Adele at Malibu Towing used the school and not his own yard, because you remember he had a yard in Malibu. He had his own yard down there. He could have towed him there. Was because he couldn't efficiently service Malibu, especially the West End with 90% of its tows, if he had to run to the center of Malibu and drop cars off there and then come back up to the West End or wait for another call. It just didn't work. This is why he stationed his trucks along Zuma and used the school simply because timing. We're, you know, we're an unusual town. We're stretched along 26 miles of coastline or 20 miles of coastline. And, you know, all our services are stretched out along there. Our beaches are stretched out, our residents, whatever. And so, you know, in this sense, most of our problem or a lot of our problems at the West End, it doesn't mean that the tow truck companies won't go to the East End. They go to the East End and pick up cars. They go to accidents and pick up cars on the East End. So they, they do do that, but 90% of it is at the West End and it's the most efficient place to be operating out of. We never, when Josh and I looked, we never, we never really found anything on the East End. The closest thing we came to that was looking at City Hall. And that was vetoed by the tow truck operators because the flatties wouldn't move around in there very well. And like this weekend for the chili cook-off, we would have had no place to do anything. 
So it really wasn't when it came down to it, you started looking at the problems involved in it. It just didn't work. Um, I think Heather Cliff was ideal. It shows that we can do it. It just, you know, it, we just got to find something of equal or uh, better location to, uh, to move forward with it. So if, if, if you guys want us to set up an ad hoc, we can talk about that right now, or Doug, Brent, Daphne, whatever you want to kick in here, I'd love to hear. So, yeah, you uh, got your hand up. Sure, and I apologize. I didn't realize we were going to be talking about this tonight, um, but I should have checked the agenda again. <laughs> so um, in any event, I think communication is always so important in anything that we do uh, and any decisions that we make. And for there to be full transparency and understanding in terms of you know, what the issue is, what the options are, and why a decision is ultimately, you were gonna land on a certain decision. So I know that Chris and Josh, I remember you doing a lot of work last year looking for sites. Um, and so I don't think there's any question about, about the effort going into sort of investigating what, what the options are. But what I would ask for is a couple things. So to have all the information. Um, number one, is it possible from the, the staff to get a list of, of the properties that are our, our city owned, that, that, we, that are under consideration, that, that we can all look at? Um, number two, are there any private um, parcels that the city may be able to use? I mean, we are, there's a cost that we're charging for, for, the, for the tow. So presumably, um, whatever the cost of the property would be gets factored into the cost of the tow. Um, so just so we know what the universe is in terms of options for property. Um, the, the second thing I think is as part of this wrap up from the summer to be able to report uh, in, a, in a summary fashion what happened with the parking lot. You gave some really good information tonight, Chris. Uh, so maybe, Lewis, you, know, you, you commented on the number of cars that were towed this weekend. Let's, let's get, a, let's get a, a status update and so that we have a full reporting on how many cars were towed uh, and when, they were, you know, when, when those tows occurred. I don't know, are we able to, is there a record from the towing company uh, in terms of the location from where the towed car was taken? Is that part of the data that we yeah. have? Available? Yeah. It's, it's uh, I mean, they have that data. I don't, I mean, I going back and, uh, going back and, uh, and pulling it all. I mean, yeah, it could be done. Um, I can labor. Yeah, it might be a little bit, but I, we could probably do that. Um, I have a feeling that I could probably, I can tell you all the places they were towed from, maybe not the exact number from each location, but I can give you locations because it's always the same. Yeah. Literally always the same. Right, like what I'm I saying mean, is- a, Sorry, sorry to interrupt. They, they, have, they have a spreadsheet that, and they just, yeah. they just pulled in manually. The car was here this time from this intersection. Uh, the person who towed it and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, yeah. I'm so be shocked that they didn't have information that they couldn't get to us. You know what, Cammy Winter just texted me. They have all that data. Yeah, I'm sure they do. So if they need okay. a, a student intern to operationalize it or whether it's already on Excel that they can use, I think that would be, this is all about information that that's, that's available um, that I think would be helpful. And then, then the third area that would be really helpful to, to be in, have information on is to once again review the, the, the safety considerations that go into the location of the lot. Um, Chris, I mean, I'm always astounded. I don't know how you are everywhere where you are, but it seems like you're everywhere all the time, no matter what's going on. Um, the few times that I'm places, you are there <laughs> or have been. <laughs> have been recently there. So um, I think you mentioned that Tammy had taken it upon herself to actually help people 
um, in Paradise Cove, you know, retrieve their cars and you know, yeah. their rides. Um, I think that's really going above and beyond. But you know what I think that the issue that I think it addresses is the safety of people who are going to collect their cars, right? So just as we are concerned about blocking uh, access to areas, which is a public safety issue, it is equally a public safety issue to have members of the public traipsing along PCH, um, you know, trying to locate their car. That's that for me always. Is, is, is a huge concern because what do people do if their the car got towed from Zuma and they've got to get up to Heathercliff? Um, they're walking along PCH and those those sides of the road are full on the weekend, so they're you know, they're walking on the road themselves. It's another public safety hazard. So um, I just think that I cite that as an example of safety concerns that go into the factoring of where a lot should go. I mean, because ultimately, there's never a perfect solution. Um, that's, that's obvious. And, you know, just from my perspective, because I know I was a, a dissenter, um, the last the last go around, and I, I, I know that raised some question, but really, it's more, you know, we need to be able to establish that we've done everything we can to um, look for locations, and while still, you know, addressing our priority of you know, preserving that open space and, and protecting the environment, which is, you know, in our mission. And I know that everyone on this commission is very um, committed to all of that. So really, it's just a question of, of doing a little bit more background work and having that information so that it's full disclosure, full transparency, and all the issues can be addressed. And, I, and I'm more than happy having been a dissenter the last time around to, you know, to help in the process uh, in, in any way. I don't think I'm the best. I know you are much more knowledgeable about property uh, in Malibu, but if I can help, you know, I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. You know, um, Mary, do you remember the list that Reva gave us of all the zoned property in Malibu for Josh and I to look at? All the zoned property? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, everything that was zoned industrial. Oh. Um, you sent me a list. I, I think I can dig it up, but I don't, I think, look, at, at the end of the day, the best thing to do is get in the car and just drive and just every, just looking out the window uh, on top of all the, on top of the list. Cause I mean, we're going to miss stuff and, and that happens. So, um, I, yeah, I will, I, look, I will look into that. I know I can I can easily get a list of city properties that are not developed. Um, but if it's if it includes private properties, I'm I'm not sure what that was, but I can see what I can find. And yeah, I just have two other quick questions. I'm sorry, I forgot to ask. Go so ahead. in terms of I know that in the last go around, there were a couple of people that had mentioned um you know, the very end of the Zuma parking lot, right, right Trancus. I mean, I mean, there's the there's a surf club there, but for the most part, the only time because I that's where I always am um, on Zuma, and really, it's just that Labor Day weekend is and maybe July Fourth that that full end gets um, gets completely used. But I, I don't know what the situation there was in terms of of option, and then. Remind me, did, did we determine that the flatbed trucks can't make it um, through where the, the underpass is when you, you know, it, it, the area that floods out sometimes, but as you go towards um, Bush Drive from westward, there's that, that through lot there, that big open space. Um, was the issue there that flatbed trucks can't make it? Oh, they can make it. They can make it through there. The problem with that location, which... Josh and I and Susan vetted to the, almost to sign almost the point of signing with beaches and harbors was the fact that to get them in and out of there on a weekend with the crowds on Bush Drive and in the turn there would have created a, a mess, a complete mess. And, and we didn't feel from the aspect of safety that it was even safe for people to be crossing through in there because it's it just there's too much blindness in there. Um, the location to put the cars was fine. It was the setup around the infrastructure around it that didn't work. So, yeah, I follow what you're saying. I, 
the west end of the we talked we talked to beaches and harbors about the parking lots they're not really excited about giving us a parking lot because like you said on the weekends we need them the most they fill up yeah so that's a problem and and i like the end of the parking lot for a couple reasons one it's out of the traffic zone and two it's got its own entrance up there so all of those things i like but it's safe for people to collect their car they're not walking on the road well, it depends on where it was towed from. If it was towed from El Matador, they might be walking in the road anyway. It's, well, that's it's, true. You know, if it's towed from Zuma, it, it, that's a really tough one. That's a moving target. And in many cases, these people show up in the yard, they Uber in. They get Uber to come pick them up or a ride from somebody else. Um, I didn't, when I was up there on Monday, I don't think I saw anybody just walk in there. Everybody came in in a car. So I don't, I don't know where these cars all come from, but um, yeah. I, I didn't see anybody walk. And I can tell you that the people in Paradise Cove here at the gate were very impressed that they came back down here and picked up those people to take them to their cars. I think that was great. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to keep looking at this. We, we have no choice but to keep looking at it. I mean, it, it, it's something that's got to be here to stay. We can't go without it. Um, Let's, uh, Brent, you have your hand up up there. I kind of, I can barely see it in the top corner there. It is yeah, a hand, no, right? No, th yeah, thanks, Chris. I, I just want to say I, I really agree with what Josh and Daphne are, are saying here. I think, Josh, you're right about it's a, it's a restart, but I think it's great to have the list of detailed criteria as you do your drive around or you do any of this kind of work. So, so you really understand, okay, well, what are the criteria for space, access, safety, effectiveness, environment, noise, all the different things that are considerations is to trying to find a, a permanent one. Um, I also really like the idea of looking not only at locations that the city of Malibu uh, owns or controls, but ones that may be commercial uh, as well, where we might be able to lease, create a, a, a lease agreement if it makes sense with the owner of that particular property. Um, but. Josh, I think you're right about driving around. In, in some cases, that's really how you're going to have to do it to identify and see who, who owns those particular pieces of property. This is something that's just not easy, but I guess the sooner we start it, the better. Uh, and Josh, you and Chris did a great job last time. I do think, and I was very pleased, that the Heather Cliff site, at least it, this year, uh, did work out. So, I mean, people seem to be pleased with it, and it worked out. So there's a lot to document there as far as the criteria and why did that work so well? And let's make sure when we per pick a permanent site, we have you know, at least that same level of success. So that's all I got, Chris. Fair enough. Um, Brent, just before, before we move on, how, do you wanna list out again what you had said for criteria? I heard space, access, safety, oh, noise. Yeah, yeah I, I think I talked about space, how much space you've got. Um, Access, the egress, you know, getting in and out of the, the site for access. Uh, safety is a big factor that we need to look at for, in any of these cases. Um, the effectiveness of the, of the site itself, how effective will it be in, in meeting all the criteria that we have. Environmental issues um, as they exist, you know, having cars parked there, oil leaks, or any impact on the environment. Uh, another one that I talked about was noise. Uh, people are concerned about the noise, fumes, issues, you know, pollution from that particular site. Um, when I talk about access, it's also for people to come get their cars, pay their fine, get their cars. How easy is it to, to get into that site? So those are just some. That doesn't mean that that's a complete list at all. Um, I'm sure there's other criteria, but I just look at it as let's define all the criteria first you know, definitely understand what those criteria are. And then let's look at the sites and we can reduce the number of options as to whether or not they will meet the criteria. Thank you. Um, let, me, let me point something out that, uh, that speaks to Daphne for sure and, and to uh, Brent. Um, one of the places that Josh and I checked out, and actually Josh came up with it and we went up and looked at it, was the equestrian center. And the equestrian center gave us everything we needed. Big parking lot, fire hydrants, gates, everything we needed. And it's used very little. Uh, the problem with it is sometimes they use it on a weekend. And that's, of course, when we need it. But you know what our big pop was there? 
I started getting nasty comments from people in that neighborhood. And I mean, you know, one of them was an ex city council person who no longer lives up there that went off at me about it. And yeah, so that, Daphne, maybe you should add self-preservation to the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Josh and I took some arrows. Trust no, me. no chance. <laughs> yeah. So it, that's, that was a great choice, Josh. And I, I agreed with it. Everybody agreed with it. The city already leases the property. It belongs to the school district, by the way. But apparently, Josh, am I right in saying they have some plans for that going forward? Uh, I, I don't want to speak out of turn. On um, The city council recently voted on an environmental impact report. They had a, uh, a bus barn on the plans. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if they're going to use it. I, look, <clears throat> I don't know if we should be even discussing the, the equestrian center. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just, I'll just leave it there. I think Doug uh, has hand up, Chris. I don't know if you can see in the corner. I couldn't hear you, Daphne. Doug has his hand up. You may not see in the corner. Oh, hey, Doug. <laughs> I can't see the top of the screen real well. Go ahead, Doug. Okay. Um, Thanks, Daphne. You know, just to give a quick history on this, uh, Chris and I started this uh, whole project about three years ago. And the first thing we wanted to do was to um, prove the concept. And we've now proved it twice. And I would like to point out earlier in this meeting, I said we need to have an after action review for what could have been the worst case scenario uh, of Labor Day weekend. Well, if we hadn't had the tow yard, one of the first things we would have said in our after action coming up is we need a way to get the cars out of, out of uh, uh, improper parking so we can move emergency vehicles around and so forth. The, the need would have been obvious had we not had it. So yeah, we towed 75 cars this weekend, this last weekend, and it proved the concept exactly as we thought it was going to be needed for. So two years, we've tried it twice. The location in Heathercliff is probably the best place we could have put it. You guys did a great job picking it up. Uh, and Daphne, your, your uh, negative vote uh, I remember asking you why negative, and you had a very valid reason and very, very uh, foresighting, foresightful, and that was, we're going to get pushback from the community. They're not going to like this. And you're absolutely right. There were a lot of people, not a lot of people, but there were a few people that put worst case scenarios all over the place and had no facts to back it up. Well, this time around, we've got a history that says, this is what happened. This is what we did. Now, as part of our agreement to use the Heathercliff lot, we said, we're not coming back. Um, and I think it would be difficult for us to uh, go back on that promise to the city council and the citizens. But we are gonna have to find another place. This has proved its, proved its value and we need, to, we need to go find another home for it. Uh, on the uh, question center, I actually was watching uh, part of the presentation on that. And you're right, the city, the uh, school board put the bus barn over there almost like a thumbtack placeholder. And by their own admission, it didn't really mean anything. They just needed to take it from where it was and need to find another spot on the property to put it. So it has probably no uh, future ending up there. And anyway, I think as Craig Foster said, it's probably 10 years from now before they ever get to the point of doing phase four, which deals with uh, that area. So I'm not sure what the outcome is, but uh, one of the problems we have are, is a very negative perception about how this operates and what the results were. For that reason, I'd recommend that uh, before the season is out, um, maybe October uh, or so, we actually do a formal commission report to the city council about what we saw worked right, what we saw needed more improvement, and put the numbers on the table. Uh, I've seen these quotes on next door, and I, we all know who they're from. Very uninformed. Facts, they don't have the facts right. We need to put the facts on the table and speak speak from uh, quantitative numbers, not subjective numbers. That said, I do think the idea of having an ad hoc group would be great. Um, I think, uh, Daphne, I don't know if you volunteered or not, but I think you did. Uh, and Josh would be another good team to go look at it. Uh, when I uh, worked on this before, Chris and I did, we got a list from Reva of all the yeah. property zoned, uh, uh, all the property in Malibu owned by the city or not that was zoned uh, for use as an impound lot. 
the list is longer than you think, but it's only because it's got places you don't want to go with uh, impound lot. All the churches, for example, are valid. Um, there's a spot next to uh, the entrance to the colony. That parking lot there is a valid spot. But some of these are just not going to work for distance reasons or community reasons. So we're going to have to find another home. Um, you know, maybe Trancus is another place to go back to. It works sort of when we had the temporary spot up there. The city owns a lot up there. Maybe that's a place. But we're going to have to do an objective search. We need to tell our story and come back quickly with an answer because, as we know, it takes six months to get any of this stuff done. And it proved its worth this last uh, uh, year. We know where the pitfalls were. We know why it didn't work on certain weekends, whether it be a, a computer issue or a staffing issue. But we know when we needed it, it came through. So that's my two cents. Well, I am, I am willing to, to assist. I mean, the reason why I uh, voted against it was, was not because of just community pushback. I, I voted against it because inertia, when you pick a spot, um, yeah, you're right. it, it just might like, continue to be that spot. And I, I was concerned that that was going to be, be the issue. So, you know, having sort of put my opinion out there i mean it's one thing to have an, it's one thing to vote against something it's another thing to have a constructive solution right so i know everyone's really worked hard on it and um i should probably put some effort into this as well uh given that i don't do a lot of the things that all of you do as far as patrolling the community in the middle of the night and stuff like that so um, i'm happy to volunteer i could um you know get input i think having the criteria is really important. And like I said, for the most part, these issues really come down to communication and uh, transparency so that so that our um, community members understand what we're dealing with, what our options are. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to do to make the best decision that we can given the information and resources available. I mean, that's how every decision is made. So, if someone else, I mean, I'm happy to do it. Let's, you know, someone else has a really uh, strong desire um, to work on it. By the way, I didn't mean to put words in your mouth about what your reasons were. I was thinking it was because of the community uh, commitment. Yeah, no, you're, it's you're, just, you're absolutely right. I remember it now. And very valid reason. I mean, a good, a good reason to be concerned. Um, and I, I think uh, if we start now, we may have something ready for next summer. I hate to say it takes nine months to do that, but that's what it's going to take. And by so, the way, Chris, um, Chris Frost is more like Batman. He's everywhere. Uh, I'll make a motion. I, look, at the end of the day, uh, Daphne and I are the only ones who are going to be on, guaranteed to be on this commission. I mean, unless we resign or something happens, whatever. But um, that's a well, good point. He, he's here. I mean, he, he, well, he's not here. So, I don't want to vol and tell him to be on this ad hoc. Hey, congratulations. Grab your blood pressure <laughs> medication and let's go. Um, I can take some so, arrows with you. <laughs> okay. So I'll, 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 do with Daphne. I'll make a motion to form an ad hoc uh, committee to explore um, the permanent, uh, a permanent site um, and present uh, public safety commission with our initial findings, as well as work to identify uh, 2023 summer temporary tow lot and that ad hoc should be uh, Commissioner Anit and uh, Commissioner Spiegel. I'll second. Oops. Okay, is there any further discussion before we call? Okay, I guess not. Uh, Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Chair Frost? Yes. Commissioner Anit? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Josh. Daphne's smiling. Josh is shaking his head. Hey, they get a pay raise out of this. Come on. Is no, I get, I get two heart attacks, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, look at all the good you're doing for the community. Um, all right, I would say that we can close that item at this point. Um, I think we've pretty much covered it. So everybody good with that?
And I just ask that um, Commissioner Spiegel and Anit just let me know when you want to, if you want to put it on the next agenda or what agenda you want to bring this back, just communicate with me and um, we'll get it on the agenda. Great. Okay, maybe uh, Daphne and I will uh, communicate with you. I think we have each other's contact information, okay. so, so we'll get together. And then I just want to let everybody know, I already sent the, uh, the list of properties to uh, Mary and hopefully and she'll disseminate that information. I, you know, I will do that. Josh, will you send me that too? Because I I'm, think that's the same list that Doug and I had to begin with. Chris, I'm, I'm gonna send curious. I'm gonna I'll send it to everyone. He sent okay. he forwarded it to me just a few minutes ago. Fair enough. Fair enough. I have a lot of confidence in you guys. You guys go out there and do one better. How's that? Like that. All right, let's go to public safety agencies. I believe Lieutenant Carr is in the meeting. Yep, I see him down there. Yep. Dustin, you wanna you want to come on live there? There you are. Welcome. Good evening. Okay. Uh, for uh, my report right now, I'll start with some quality of life issues. Um, I understand uh, there was a lot of concern regarding the uh, fireworks explosions on the night of August 26 into the early morning hours of August 27. Um a crime report was taken, follow-up was conducted, no additional video at this time has been obtained of the incidents. Um, the owner, uh, there was a dark colored BMW involved, it ended up being a dark blue BMW. The owner of the vehicle was identified. It appears that this uh, incident was the work of young adults and or juveniles. The, uh, the incident has been addressed with the uh, owner of the vehicle, and that should have stopped the stopped altogether. Generally, we wouldn't contact um, someone suspected of a crime, but because of the emergency situation, the huge fire danger that we had and everything else, we had to preemptively do that. Um, and uh, I'll make a, some similar commentary on the uh, September 12th uh, city council meeting. Uh, moving on. Um, uh, it was mentioned, uh, I haven't gotten any recent report of street racers lately. If there is, please continue to send me emails or call the station, uh, so we can address those, uh, those situations as they come up. Um, I have, uh, in the past month positioned deputies out late at night to address those issues, um, and, uh, can continue to do so if more incidents arise, uh, regarding, some of the homeless population, I know the homeless count is due to come out soon. I did want to mention that uh, we had our uh, uh, liaison deputy along with the host team go up Las Tunas Canyon on off-highway vehicles. Um, they wanted to report that there were no uh, new encampments found up there. And the, uh, there were a couple of encampments, but they have been the same people that were there before. They continued to offer outreach for them and hopefully placement. Also regarding the homeless, there were three successes. And again, I'll share this on the uh, next city council meeting. I wanted to mention that a, uh, one of the person people experienced homeless was a, was a female, she was pregnant. They were able to, I guess, get in contact with their family in Colorado. They were also able to procure her a ticket there. Uh, so she was able to uh, find, find, so, you know, find a, you know, her family and reconnect. Uh, one, one uh, person experienced homelessness right now, uh, they are currently looking for an apartment and a third is now approved for a housing voucher. So we've had uh, continued successes um, along with our MET team uh, in uh, helping out with the homeless crisis and we'll continue to work with the city. It's been a, it's been a really great collaboration. So uh, moving on now to uh, in uh, incidents of interest or major incidents. So, uh, TMZ reported there was a, they called it a stampede at the chili cook-off. Uh, I just want to make some brief comments on that. It was a, uh, possibly a teenager yelled gun while they were in line. Uh, deputies were right on scene right there. You can see them on video walking inside. Uh, there was no gun or shots fired or injuries or anything like that. Obviously, the person that yelled that was, disappeared into the crowd. Uh, but it was a brief incident. It was quickly handled. And uh, for all intents, and, you know, and uh, so that was uh, ended quickly. Um, Beach team came to a close on Monday. 
uh, was reported there were no major incidents. The final numbers regarding their citations and everything is currently being tabulated. And I'll brief the city council on that on uh, September 12th. Regarding the, uh, there was a fatal collision on uh, September 4th. It was northbound Malibu Canyon, south of Civic Center. It was a single vehicle rollover and uh, that ended in tragedy, uh, you know, it was tragedy. Other traffic statistics, there were in uh, the month of August, there was no fatal traffic collisions. Um, so that's good to report. So that'll be the second month in a row. Obviously, September uh, tragically has changed. Um, and uh, crime statistics, seri there's no uh, significant increase in serious crimes. And uh, there was a slight spike in, uh, in some incidences such as burglaries in July that seems to have ended at, as I pulled the August numbers, they're significantly less. Let's see. And uh, one final thing is uh, on Sunday, September 18th, there is a coffee with a cop at the farmer's market on Sunday from 10 to 1 p.m. So I, anyone that wants to uh, meet uh, Captain C2 or myself or any of the deputies that work in the area, please stop by. And that is my briefing for today. Hey, I'll leave it open for any questions. Um, yeah, Lieutenant Carr, my, yes, I'm, I'm unmuted. Um, have those electronic ticket writers arrived at the station? Um, not to my knowledge, but I will follow up actually tomorrow. I, I uh, heard what you said earlier regarding the ticket riders being ready. So uh, I'll be at the station all day tomorrow. So I'll follow up and, uh, and uh, hopefully send someone down to pick it up. Uh, I'm not aware that they've arrived yet. No one's reported that to me, um, but I will follow up tomorrow. And uh, if they haven't been picked up, we'll, uh, we'll go down and pick them up for sure. Yeah, Renee. Renee actually called you last week. Called over to let them know that they was there. They were there, and I I left a message for Corey Godot because he was one of the people that wanted one of them. But we can't we can't do anything about this uh, the RV and the parking thing at night till those things are in the hands of the early cars. Because I, I get it. You can't spend five minutes writing a ticket and write a hundred tickets in a night. Uh, you can't do it. It doesn't work. But forty five seconds on a ticket does. So that was the point was to get these guns or get these ticket riders and uh, we'll get the job done. So hopefully it's the, the, hopefully it's the last thing we need and we can get this thing cleared. Hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, and you, and no problem. you need somebody to run them over, call me. I'll bring them over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, on that, we're uh, one last thing actually I wanted to mention on that is we are planning to do another, another RV operation, possibly late this month. And um, I'll keep you posted on that. You know, Lieutenant Carr, I, I don't, you know, I'm a civilian. I'm obviously not law enforcement. Um, but, you know, doing one op, it, this is something that needs to be consistent. And the, the whole point of paying a million and a half dollars for that car was literally to cover this on a, on a, on a consistent basis. And, you know, the car's out there four nights a week. So I don't think anybody expects them to spend all four nights riding Parker's. But I think two out of four would be um, probably be worthy of the money that we've spent. And also the fact that on the RVs, once you've ticketed them three times, they're up to $500. They're probably gone. But, you know, once a month or once every couple of months, it doesn't scare them. Uh, believe me, I know these, these things are augered in. Some of them, I think they have mailboxes out on the coast highway now. <laughs> they're just, you know, they're just. They're there, and to get them out of there, this was the last pry bar that we felt that that you know we could ante up to try to get it done. So I'd like to see it done more consistently, and I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. I'm a volunteer; I'll go out there and help do whatever I need to do. I'll be glad to be there doing it. So Josh will too. I see him shaking his head. Hey, Chris will be out there whether you like it or not. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, that's that's my two cents on it. And, you know, the street racing at the West End. So those LIDAR guns that the city bought four LIDAR, we bought four LIDAR guns last year. The video ones are really expensive, good ones. And I know that Teos has one. I don't know where Kelly's went. And there's two more on top of that. Those were specifically for those deputies, literally, well, anywhere in Malibu, but on the West End on Saturday and Sunday mornings, when they come off Mulhall and they're racing, you can get those guys at 100 or 110 as long as you got a flatbed ready. They'd love to see their car go out to the tow yard. So 
if you're going to have to be at the West End, because even if I called you and I was out there, I could have called you. But by the time you got there, they're gone. And that's the problem. And, you know, they got eyes everywhere. When they see a deputy coming down the highway, the first thing they're doing is radioing the guy down the road and saying, hey, they're here. Let's go somewhere else. And the motorcycles are the worst. They actually actually send guys out ahead of them and uh, in the canyons of safe canyons. And if the people if they see uh, some kind of convoy of deputies, whether it be CHP or, or, or sheriff, they tell them, well, let's get out of Mohawk. Let's go to Stunt Road now. So, you know, it's, it's a it's a cat and mouse game all the time. But the Coast Highway at the West End, that's like shooting goldfish in a bowl. I'm telling you, um, it's quite a show out there. On I think it was Sunday morning. It was Sunday morning. Quite a show. And I know you guys were busy on Sunday. That was your, probably your busiest day of the whole weekend. I get it. Um, but if we need something else, tell us what we need. You know, we've been pretty good about providing where we could. So we just want to get the problem solved. Absolutely. Anybody, anybody have any other questions, comments for Lieutenant Carr? Oh, I know you just said something about the coffee with a cop. That's, yes, not, that's not this week. It's the following weekend, right? Right. Yeah, September 18th. Correct. Sunday. You, you guys realize that's the weekend of the triathlon? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. Because that's an all hands on deck situation. So. Yeah. I. Yes. I. I, yeah. I, I we. 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 Are, we are aware that those two uh, events just happen to coincide with each other. So. Yeah, I know. I kind of helped set that up with the farmers market. So, but I didn't realize the date when the date was presented, and I don't know that uh, Captain C two did either at the time. But you know, I think you guys could do more than one down there, obviously. So. Um, it's a good recruiting process for you guys. You guys might be able to recruit some deputies into the system. That's what I would like to see. So yeah. if you know anybody, let us know. <laughs> oh, believe me. And if I know somebody, I'm going to make sure you sign them out out here. <laughs> so, all right. That's it for me. Uh, uh, quickly. What was the time again for the 18th? It's from when to when? Uh, looking at 10 o'clock uh, in the morning till one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. All right. Are you bringing the uh, the vehicles now to search and rescue and SWAT and what have you? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll look into that. Uh, I'll ask the captain and uh, just see curious. where we're at with that. I'm just, you don't need to get back to me. I was just curious. So Okay. Anything else? Josh, Daphne, Brent, Brad, Gabe, nobody, huh? Well, then I'm going to call the meeting to a conclusion here. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Josh seconded. All right. Call okay. for the vote. Vice Chair Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Spiegel. Yes. Commissioner Anit. Yes. Chair Frost. Yes. Motion carries, you are adjourned. Thank you.